All right, guys, today we are building a realistic airport, but without additional assets from the workshop. What? Yeah, we won't need them. I want to keep the series as vanilla as possible with just some quality of life mods and assets anyway. Now, the really cool thing about this is that the airport DLC released after the modding incident, which unlocked everything for us. So we actually have to really play the game and level the airport up. Nice. And of course, the aim is to build the best airport ever, right? If you might ask yourself what kind of realism we are going for without a bunch of assets from the workshop, well, this kind of realism. An airport is a big structure, so it does not make sense to look at it zoomed in. What we want is rather the airport feel when looking at it when it fills the screen. That is, when it has to look realistic. So how to achieve that? Hello peeps, Drago there, welcome back to the next episode of Building Draken, to which we are going to add the most valuable asset today. And of course, I also explain how this works in the game, so you can build the best possible airport for your cities in the future as well. You saw me building two runways, one is for landing and one for takeoff. And you are probably asking yourself, how do I know in advance that this is going to work out this way? Yeah, this needs to level anyway, so let's get into some game mechanics. Harbors and runways pretty much use the same mechanic. When you put down a harbor, then this connection line shows up. And this connects the harbor at the shortest possible distance to these shipping passes. Those shipping passes are put in by the map maker and it's their job to ensure that those shipping lines do not cross any mountains or such. Now, Ships operate on a flat plane. When planes travel along these purple air routes, they are at cruising altitude. Only when they leave the air route and are headed for a runway, they perform a change in altitude. This is why planes, depending on location on certain maps, perform those weird spirals. When I made the map Joyride, I envisioned an approach like this. Well, to actually get such angles, the nearest point of the air route to the closest runway would need to be on opposite side of a city skylines map. But as long as you put the airport in its destination, designated spot and respect the angle of the runways, most of the planes will perform nice takeoffs and landings. As Colossal Order gave us, in contrast to real life, one-way runways and taxiways, we are able to dedicate runways to landing and takeoff by only connecting them on one end opposite to the closest node of the air route pass. Little tip for leveling faster, put public transportation next to the airport. And there we go, now the real fun begins. I want to stick to the classical look, not only because the shape suits the limited space we are working with, but also because Draken is supposed to have some history. And these classic terminals give me some catch me if you can vibes. Great movie by the way. Now, you identify the background music correctly, a time lapse is inbound, but you definitely want to stick around for more tips and the level 3 changes, plus the detailing for which I have something awesome coming up. Talk to you again in a bit.
There was some wild parking going on along the roadside, which I banned, but then had to provide appropriate parking in the area, which actually brings us back to the topic of realism, never forget parking around airports. But what feels really unrealistic is this example here. When it comes to designing an airport, its runways, taxiways, the terminals and such, you need to think for its utilization by planes. Those are big. I mean, we don't have the biggest ones yet, but the reason why airports are so huge is not only because they need runways to accelerate and decelerate and thus size matters, I'm not saying that a longer runway makes a better looking airport, we all know City Skylines is off in scale, but make it believable. What I wanted to point out is that airports are also so big because planes have enormous wingspans. In real life, you'd never put a hangar this close to a runway. When it comes to taxiways, the biggest planes need to be able to pass past each other when taxiing without ripping each other's wings off. On runways it's even more critical, because stuff not only goes fast, but planes also might be affected by winds. So let's say, with their wheels on the ground, planes can taxi past each other at a somewhat safe distance when the taxiways are 10 units apart. Now because of winds, you want to make these units at least 12 for runways. 14 or 16 would look even more realistic, but I lack the space to do this here. So, so 6 units to the left and right has to suffice. So, when fixing this area, I also pulled out Node Controller to create those smooth curves we know from real life airfields, because airplanes are not particularly known for their ability to perform sharp turns. Also, I added this fake taxiway leading in the wrong direction to not encourage landing on the wrong runway, just to have a reference for the amount of clearance I should keep. And there is level 3, so let's put in all the aviation in the game possible and make this a really awesome airport. As our first act Let's have our own airline. What the heck are you doing?
Okay, yeah, getting that cargo train line under two degrees gradient, that was kind of a pain in the butt. Now, to complete our airport project, I wanted one more little addition, the expo center, to make everything fully functional. But I promised you something special regarding detailing. Are you ready for the money shot? Thanks for watching guys, please leave a like if you liked it and we see each other next time. Bye!